Day 136 Notes Pre-Calculus. This week we're going to work through Section 6.5 and Section 6.6. .6. These sections cover what's known as the Law of Sines and the Law of Cosines. Now in the past we worked to solve right triangles, that is we found all missing sides and missing angles of right triangles. This week we're going to work with what are known as oblique triangles. Or in other words, these are triangles that are not right triangles. So anything that's not a right triangle can be called an oblique triangle. And we're going to discuss four different ways or four different cases of uniqueness. With three out of six known parts of a triangle, we can develop what are known as these cases, these four different cases or four different methods used to solve for the remaining parts of the triangle. Now each part consists of an angle, or I'm sorry, each triangle consists of three different angles and three different sides. So these are the six parts that I was referring to just a moment ago. And while we'll spend most of the week working on solving triangles or looking for missing sides and angles, there's an, a nice uh, application of utilizing the law of cosines, which can be found um, on page 453. It's called Heron's Formula. And you can use this formula to find the area of any triangle, regardless of having its um, base and height. So the bonus question on this week's quiz is going to be about Heron's Formula. So uh, in your free time, if you'd like to attempt the bonus point at the end of the week, uh, make sure that you study the section on page 453 in 6.6. .6. All right, so moving forward here, first things first, we w must recognize that we have to label uh, non-right triangles in the same fashion. We have, to, we have to form some sort of consistency here. And so what we're going to do when moving forward is that all triangles, whether they're right triangles or not, or not right triangles, uh, we need to label their angles with uppercase letters, and we need to label their sides with lowercase letters. If we get in the habit of following the same pattern, it's going to make our discussion of these triangles a little bit more clear. So let's take a look at uh, these first few examples. If I asked you to solve the following triangles, that means we would like to we would like to find based on this given information uh, the missing side length here, a missing side length here. Notice how I'm using the lowercase letters for the side lengths, and then we can identify any missing angles as well. Now I'll call A and B. Well, let me be a little bit more specific, a little bit more precise here. I'll actually say that this angle at the top is A. This angle in the bottom corner is B, and this one is a capital C. Now, the reason for that is because the uh, angle, capital A, is always the opposite side of, or it's always opposite of the side length A. Uh, capital B is the side length that's opposite of what we would call our lowercase b, and C and C are opposites of one another as well. That's another way that we can keep our work organized. So when it comes to solving the triangles, again, we're looking for all three angles, A, B, and C. And we're also looking for all three side lengths, A, B, and C. Uh, the information that we know right now is that capital B is 45 degrees. Capital C is 90 degrees. We know that because of the symbol that was drawn here in the corner. We could find out what capital A is. We'll come back to that in just a moment. We don't know what lowercase a is, but we do know that lowercase b is 16, and we don't know what lowercase c is. What you'll see is that we started with three known values, and we'll be able to calculate the remaining values in this triangle. So let's do some work over here off to the side. Uh, we know that the angle measures of any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I subtract from it the 90 degree value for angle C and the 45 degree value for angle B, that leaves us with 45 degrees left over. So therefore angle A has to be 45 degrees. Next we might notice that we have an angle, an opposite side, and we can use that to find an adjacent side using the tangent rule. 
So tangent of 45 degrees must be equal to 16 divided by A. Now from our unit circle discussion last week, the 45 degree angle is this measurement here, who has coordinates square root 2 over 2 and square root 2 over 2. Tangent is defined as y divided by x, so I know tangent of 45 is simply square root 2 over 2 divided by square root 2 over 2. Now, immediately I'm going to recognize that that will reduce to 1, so I will say that tangent of 45 is equal to 1, and that 1 has to be equal to 1, 16 divided by a. Now 16 divided by something has to equal 1. That tells me that A itself has to be 16 as well. We've now found that missing side. Even if you didn't recognize the solution to um, the tangent 45 by considering our unit circle, you could have gone to the calculator to solve this as well. Now lastly, in order to find C, we might rely on the Pythagorean equation. A squared plus b squared equals c squared. So therefore, 16 squared plus 16 squared must equal c squared. So that's 256 plus 256 equals c squared. 512 is equal to c squared. c is equal to the square root of 512. Uh, using a calculator, we can simplify this. So we'll enter the square root of 512 and see that that's equal to 16 square root 2. We've now solved this triangle. We found all six pieces. Let's try the same for this remaining triangle. Um, make sure you label it first, so I'm going to call this angle A, B, and C. Therefore, we have side length C side length A and side length B. So when we're solving, we're going to look for A, B, C, A, B, and C. Capital A is equal to 3 pi over 8. Low, uh, capital B and capital C. C. Uh, notice that we're measuring in radians now, so uh, radian measurement for 90 degrees is pi over 2. We know that from our unit circle. We don't know what B is yet, that's something that we can solve. Lowercase a is unknown, lowercase b is unknown, lowercase c, however, is 425. So off to the side, I'll start my calculations here. I know that the interior measurement of a right triangle has to be 180 degrees, so when I'm talking about uh, measurements in radians, then I know 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. So I'm going to do the same calculation that I did just a moment ago, but subtract in terms of radians. So we have pi for our total measurement, subtract away pi over 2 for the 90 degree measure, and subtract 3 pi over 8 for the other known measure, and that would leave us with pi over 8 or 1 8 pi for measurement B. Measurement A is perhaps another opposite measurement from our known angle. We have our hypotenuse as well, so when we have the opposite side and a hypotenuse, we can then rely on the sine function. Sine of 3 pi over 8 must be equal to A divided by 425. Now, 3 pi over 8 is not a well-known angle measure in our unit circle, so I need to rely on the calculator for this one. I will multiply 425 times sine of 3 pi over 8, making sure that my calculator is set in radians, because if it's not set in radians, then we'll, we'll obtain a strange result. This will help me calculate A, so let's jump over to the calculator here. This is 425. times sine of 3 pi over 8.
comes out to be this odd value. Let's um, go ahead and give a, uh, an approximate result here. The side length for A must be 392.6488 units. A is 392.6488 units. And by using our Pythagorean equation, we can then find the other missing side. 392.6488 squared plus b squared must be equal to 425 squared. b then would be equal to the square root of 425 squared minus 392.6488 squared. All that I've done here is mentally subtract the 392.6488 squared from both sides of the equation and then I've applied the square root. That way I only have to show one step for my work. So the square root of 425 squared minus, and I'll just recall my answer because that, that's the 392 that I needed. That answer is squared and I'll press enter here. Um, oops, I think I tapped that twice. The answer we want is this one here, 162.6405. 162.6405 units. 162.6405 units. And we've now solved this right triangle. It's very important that you understand how to solve right triangles by using our trigonometry rules and simple math, recognizing that the angles add up to 180 degrees or 1 pi radians. I'm going to skip this example for the video, but uh, I would encourage you to try it on your own and check back with me if you'd like to verify your results. Now, as we mentioned before, when solving triangles, we must have at least three of the six known measurements, and one of those must be a side. We can talk a little bit more about that later, but essentially you will never find a case called the triple A case that doesn't, um, that doesn't uh, verify a unique triangle. It will only present similar triangles, the same shape but different sizes. Each of these three, or each of these four cases here will actually allow us to produce unique triangles. Now, in case number one, we'll find ourselves working with triangles that have two angles and one side. Now, it's really important the way we actually use our letters here to denote the case, because what this is telling us in this first example is that we have two angles known and the side in between the angles that are known. In this particular example, we have the two angles and the side on the outside of those angles known. We'll talk about examples in just a moment, but it, again, it is important to recognize that these two are two different types of triangles, but they do fall under the same case. In case number two, we have two sides, two side lengths that are known, and an angle that's known. This angle, however, is to the outside of our two known sides. Case three and case four involve uh, side lengths and angles in a similar fashion to the proofs that you may have studied in geometry, but you'll see that in case three we have two side lengths and an included angle, which is slightly different than the two side lengths and the non-included angle. Finally, case number four is a case of all three sides that are known. It's important to note that oblique triangles that follow cases one and two will be solved with what we call the law of sines, and oblique triangles that follow cases three and four will be solved with the law of cosines. So again, law of sines for these first two, law of cosines for that second group. Let's take a minute to look at some sample triangles and try to decide which case applies to each of the triangles. For your homework tonight, I'm going to ask that you do the exact same thing that we do in the notes here. We're going to identify the case and then tell which law would be used to solve the triangle. By looking at this first example, I see that we have two angles, whoops, two angles here, capital A, capital B, 
and a side length measured in between. So two angles with a side in between would be ASA. ASA follows under case number one. So I'll indicate that ASA case one. And we need to solve this using the law of sines. Law of sines works with case one and case two. Let's take a look at this next example. Here we have two sides, one side, two sides. So 42 and 21 are given to us as side lengths, whereas capital A is our angle measure here. So this time we are around we have SAS, one, two sides with the angle included in between. This is example of case number three. And case three must be solved with the law of cosines. Let's take a look at another example. This time around we have one side length, two side lengths, and one angle measure. Notice, however, that the angle measure is not included in between the two sides. If I were to collapse these two sides, I'm not any longer talking about the angle in between those two. This is an excluded side or a non-included side. So we have two sides and an angle that's not included. SSA is an indicator for case number two. We would solve this using the law of sines. Take a look at these two examples. Pause the video and try to answer on your own which case and which law would be used to solve each of these. If you said SAS, case number three, law of cosines for this first example, you were correct. ASA, case number one, law of sines for the second example. Let's try two more. In this case, SAS, case number three, law of cosines. SSA, case number two, law of sines. And finally, side, angle, side. SAS, case number three, law of cosines. So we've discussed the law of sines and law of cosines um, in terms of using them to solve triangles. Let's take a look at what those actually say. The law of sines says the side lengths of a side are proportional to the sines of the corresponding opposite angles. The law of sines can be expressed using this formula here. Sine of angle A divided by length A would be equal to sine of angle B divided by length b, which would also be equal to sine of c divided by length c. That is your law of sines. And you might recognize that if I know three of the six values, either capital A, B, C, or lowercase a, B, C, we have a series of proportions that we can then solve for missing values. The law of cosines, on the other hand, is a little bit more wordy. The square of one side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other sides and the opposite of twice the product of the other sides and the cosine of the opposite angles. I'd be very surprised if you memorize that description, so instead what you should be focusing on are the equations used to describe that comparison. You'll notice almost immediately that in each of these three scenarios, this kind of helps us deal with the different cases that we might encounter, that we have the side lengths equal to one another, very similar to the way the Pythagorean equation is set up. But you can see here that we go in different order each time. And we always subtract off two times two of our side lengths times cosine of our unknown or one of our angles. So for example in this first case if a squared is equal to b squared and c squared then b and c get reused in our second half of the calculation 
and capital A becomes the angle measure in question. A squared and C squared, A and C get reused. B is then the angle measure in our calculation. A squared, B squared, 2AB, cosine C. In the interest of time, I'll stop the video here and we'll actually start tomorrow's class with a discussion of two examples, how we can solve problems using the law of sines or the law of cosines. For tonight's homework, all that I'd like for you to do is identify the cases and which law would be used to solve the following problem. So uh, numbers 3 through 18 from 6.5 and numbers 3 through 20 and 6.6. .6. Go through and look at each of the triangles. Identify the three values that are known. So in this case we have a side length and two angles. In this case we have one, two angles and a side length here. Two angles and a side length, so on. Identify the known values. Ignore the unknown values for a moment. Identify the known values and decide which case they belong to, and then use that case number to determine which law must be used to solve that triangle. That's all that I'm asking you to do tonight. I'm not asking you to solve any of these using the laws of sine or cosine. Simply identify the cases only.